as the Lord gives you breath and keeps you here upon the earth, your purpose is to glorify Him by serving Him. You're going to take them back to who He is. Why don't we talk about Him more? Why isn't He preached in every single church? How are we justified by faith in Jesus Christ? who is the propitiation for our sins and through his sacrifice has paid in full our debt to God so that he... That same Jesus is the Jesus today. So you can trust him. He's the same yesterday, the work that he did on the cross. What does God do? Scripture doesn't say that he's love, 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 or mercy, 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 or wrath, 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 but that he's holy, holy, holy. So what knits us together, what brings us united together is our common bond in Christ. We are knit together in that way, are we not? You understand that when we're in Jesus Christ, we can never be more justified. Because we are justified not with our justification, but with His justification. If you begin to think before the mountains, before the earth, the eternal Father, the eternal Son, the eternal Spirit, in perfect loving communion within the triune God. One essence. The conclusion to which you could come. And Calvin said no. There was the full revelation given in his son who came as the greatest prophet, the greatest expositor, who spoke all the words that the Father gave him to speak and he taught them to his disciples and he commissioned them out and there is nothing else to be said. But listen friends, there is a right and a wrong way to understand Christ. It, there's, not, there's no middle ground on this. Either you've got it right or you've got it wrong. All of our works are tainted, so if we're gonna receive righteousness, it has to come from God un, 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 untainted by our own sin, and it has to be given to us as a gift. No! Luther, no! This is good news for you right here and right now. This is good news to you, right? Because war and famine and tribulation and trials and all of these things are part of our life right here and right now. And God saves his people. That's who he is. That's who he was. And that's who he will always be. We see people on the outside, we make all these judgments and we don't see them in light of the cross. We don't live in light of the cross. When you know you've been saved from your sin, you're like, you know what, I don't see people the way I used to see people. I see people in the first Adam, unbelievers. And I see people in the second Adam, believers. And I don't care where they come from, what their background is, I'm just glad to be adopted in the family. Do this pragmatic society, and we've lost sight of the fact that the central biblical teaching about the Word of God is the Word does its own work. I am God and there is no one like me. That is to say there is only one God so that all that exists exists within the purposes of that one God. There are not competing gods. Paul, Paul's not saying to them it's an if comma. Paul's not saying that it's, it's possible. Paul's not saying that it's just something that's kind of hopeful in a glorious way. He is saying it is objectively glorious because it's tied to Christ. And if it's tied to Christ, and if Christ is the, God, is the man described in verses 15 through 20, then you can take it to the bank now. And the only reason you exist and that I exist is for him. For to live is Christ.